Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of F122 at Driver Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We are headed to the United States of America, home Grand Prix for Logan Sargent, uh, and it is here in Miami, so very close to home as Logan Sargent is from the Florida area here. Now we'll see what he can put up uh, on the board now as we are ready to get underway in this weekend, and we have had some promising, uh, you know, results lately here uh, come in the last couple episodes, of course, back-to-back -back points results. We have a couple parts changes coming into this episode. You can see the points right now. Perez at the top of the board over Verstappen by only one point and Leclerc back by three. We have picked up now seven points in our rookie season here. You see the sights and scenes of the Miami area as we were touching down, getting ready uh, for some action here in practice. But yeah, ready to get rolling here. You see such a beautiful circuit it is. I'm personally not a fan of this circuit, I'll be honest. Don't really care for it. It is a beautiful circuit scenery. Looks fantastic. I gotta say that much there as you see our teammate of Yuka Sonoda uh, in his Alpha Tori there. But yeah, when it comes to driving this track, I just don't enjoy it. I really can't stand racing here. Uh, but, you know, there's no other option than to just force yourself into what you don't want to do sometimes and try to excel at it. And that's what we're trying to do here this weekend. Now, my practice got off to a bit of a rough start. Watch this right here. As I actually go head on into the barrier, the rain was falling. Even on simulation damage, I didn't take any ounce of wing damage on that hit. I was a bit confused. Uh, so we fast forward, actually, this is FP2 at this point when we got some dry racing again. I didn't really want to do any practice in the wet because it was supposed to be a completely dry weekend. So I really wasn't, you know, looking to get some wet practice on this specific weekend. Although maybe it could come in handy for future seasons of this F123 driver career mode here. Look at that moment right there of Overseer, but I was really uh, having my ups and downs in this circuit, to say the least, here in practice and just trying to get warmed up. You remember uh, last episode, Banku, we really struggled to get up to speed. Felt like it was similar this time around in Miami, just so it was a little bit more up to speed uh, compared to Banku. But we ended uh, FP2 here in P7 while my teammate of Yuka Sonoda, uh, he was all the way down towards the bottom of the grid as we were now focused in on qualifying. Home weekend for you, Logan. How do you feel coming into quali? Yeah, I feel all right. I don't expect much, but we will do what we can. We still have a ton of work to do as a team. You hear uh, Natalie Pinkham there quickly asking Logan Sargent about his upcoming home Grand Prix weekend and, well, just mainly his thoughts on qualifying here as we kick off qualifying Q1. Can we make it out of Q1? That's really the question here. We had our ups and downs so far this season, you know, with the Salvatore team as a rookie uh, when it comes to qualifying and the Grand Prix. Uh, it's, it's only been, what, five Grand Prix into the season and I feel like we've already been through quite a bit here now. Uh, but yeah, getting through this first and opening lap in Q1, it was an okay lap. It wasn't anything spectacular, but I was pretty content with it and you're going to see us exiting the final turn. It was an okay run down towards the line. We crossed to stripe and we beat stroll Zhou Guan Yu land stroll his AI needs to be changed quickly because it's terrible uh, in this game right now EA codemasters they need to fix that immediately but we were coming to start our final lap but watch this so things get really interesting here P15 on the grid Yuki Sonoda our teammate way behind but George Russell he let me pass but then all of a sudden he was starting to attack me as soon as we kicked off the second and final lap here as you can see myself just hustling this car to try and stay in front of him and we we gain about a tenth and a half, two tenths of a second, just about, but Russell down towards the end of the straightaway, you can see on the proximity radar, he lunges one up my inside, what are you doing, George? And that completely ruins my lap, so we're not going to be able to get in a good lap now, George won't either, uh, but I found a way to actually just about still improve, uh, but we struggle really hard on grip on the exit of the final corner. We're down to P16, we're going to be out, we're not going to make it because of George Russell's shenanigans here, so big shout out to George Russell. And yeah, we're out in Q1 because of that. P16 is what we end up getting. Not very impressed uh, with George Russell, to say the least here. Now we'll take a look at the rest of the order. And I believe my teammate, yeah, Yuki Tsunoda made it into P15. He beat me by about a tenth of a second uh, as Albon Stroll, Zhou Guan Yu Sargent in his home Grand Prix gets a grid penalty, although he qualified last for a collision with Fernando Alonso. So he goes from last to last. Let's head to the grid. Welcome to the Magic City. We're here at the Miami International Autodrome, the home of the Hard Rock Stadium, a multi-purpose sports and entertainment hub which has hosted Super Bowls, Baseball World Series, numerous rock concerts, and of course, 
as of 2022, Formula One. Sitting at the southeastern coast of Florida, the Miami International Autodrome has 19 corners and 3.36 miles of racing. It's a circuit designed to encourage close racing while meeting the highest safety standards. Either way, I'm sure it's one that will please the fans. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Sainz, Perez, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Russell, Norris, Ocon, Gasly, Bottas, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Golden Boy, Albon, Stroll, Joe, Sonoda, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Ready to go then, we're going to see quite a bit of different strategy as well here. Take a look at this, look at the driver's softs, hards, mediums, they're all being used. We're going to be starting on mediums uh, and yeah, going to hards, a one-stop strategy here for Miami now. And we're just going to kind of go on the fly and, and see what happens as we're ready to go racing. Here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? We will soon find out. So as all the cars take their positions on the grid, the teams will be hoping their strategies pay off for them in today's race. The question I'm asking is which teams have got it right, which ones have got it horribly wrong? All right, boys, this is going to be an interesting one. we got some work to do. It sucks what happened in quality, but I don't see why we can't uh, work our way forward. Yep, I agree. Shame with Russell there, but let's focus on today. Well, it's time to go. Time to focus up, get ready to get re off the launch here, off the grid, of course, now. So, yeah, some work to do after missing Q2. Our teammate of Yuki Sonoda, well, you saw uh, what happened with their grid penalty for him uh, on the starting grid. So he's starting at the back there, just one spot ahead of homeboy Logan Sargent there, who had that grid penalty after contact and a collision, I should say, with Fernando Alonso as we're ready. To go racing here, 29 laps in Miami now as we're ready to go racing. It's lights out, we're underway. Charles Leclerc leads the way down towards turn one with Carlos Sainz following him. And Max Verstappen's had a horrendous start on soft tires. He's surrounded by drivers on mediums. You would have expected that Verstappen would have the better launch. Hamilton there on the hards, he gets through as well. It's an absolutely abysmal start for the Dutchman. Leclerc, Sainz, Ferrari 1-2. And I'm still surprised by how competitive Ferrari and Mercedes have been compared to Red Bull considering when you look at the R&D chart Red Bull is far ahead of every single team behind them and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that the other teams are so uh, competitive against them I'm not complaining because it's fantastic uh, for the sport to see of course these teams still contending now uh, as you can see right now everyone kind of settling into this single file line now a lot of racing to go here in Miami a big breaking zone big opportunity for overtakes right down here but surprisingly you're not going to see many drivers you know hop on the opportunity right there I myself look up the inside of the Haas right now. I'm trying to make some headway. Is that a pretty good start? I was pretty happy uh, with where I was. P14 now alongside Kevin Magnussen who's going to get the spot on me. We're on the mediums. You can see Magnussen on hards. Hards for Stroll. A lot of different strategy. Definitely the most different tire strategies we've seen this season uh, throughout the grid. A lot of softs, a lot of mediums, a lot of hards. So it's going to be really interesting to see which one is going to prevail over the other here. Now, I felt like with the one-stop medium to hards, I was in a really good position 
position uh, as I was continuing to run right behind Kevin Magnuson on this second lap. Now up front, it was already uh, starting to get a little bit spicy. Leclerc was under attack from uh, Sainz and Perez was also getting into the mix. So I wasn't, uh, wasn't going to be too long until they really start to tussle it out here. As you can see, Magnuson on Gasly right now trying to move his way forward. Pierre Gasly, a really rough start to the season. A terrible moment for myself as we've spun it around out of the final turn. We're going to get it collected and back going, but that's a big mistake rare. The first uh, big mistake we have made this weekend aside from that practice incident, obviously. I don't know what happened there, dude. I didn't do anything different. I just dropped it. You hear me on the radio, as that's happening, Max Verstappen, who had a terrible start, is now behind Lewis Hamilton, now getting passed by George Russell, he's going to fall in behind him, and Fernando Alonso is going to put the attack on him, this is a lap later now, because I'm all by myself, we can kind of focus on what's happening here, Verstappen on softs is getting overtaken by Russell, now by Alonso, on hard compound tires, what's gone wrong? For the Dutchman of Verstappen right here, nothing seems to be going well for him in that Red Bull. And it would continue. Look at this big lockup right here to begin lap four as he had Lando Norris and Valtteri Bontan straight behind him. Things are going completely wrong for Verstappen, the defending, of course, two-time world champion now at this point here in Formula One. So very, very interesting because he didn't have any contact, didn't have any wing damage that I could find in the replay. So I was very surprised. Now, Valtteri Bontan is going around the outside in the final turn, lap five, coming to lap six. And you can see that Verstappen and though fights back here this is another lap later and it wasn't quite over yet between these two Verstappen with that preferred lane and uh, grip out of the final turn now Bontas is on soft so this is an even matchup here now as they head through this run straight away Lando Norris in prime position here to maybe attack Bontas down into turn one he's gonna go full send he's gonna lunge it up the inside of Verstappen as well and Verstappen is gonna drop down into eighth place what is going on there it's not looking good there for him as we continue on my own here and dead last trying to work my way forward and recover from the accident now the gap was coming down to the cars in front as you can see max verstappen is going to come into the pits here before anybody else lap nine this is he's going to put on a set of mediums so he uh, he might have to pit before this grand prix is over but now things really starting to get interesting carlos signs putting the attack on his teammate of charles leclerc going to go around the outside para is not far behind this battle either so don't count him out hamilton russell both on hards watch out for them because as this run goes on they are going to continue to close in on this top three i think hamilton and russell both might be in a pretty good position here carlos signs after losing the lead right there decides he's going to come into the pits now uh, as we kick off this 11th lap of the grand prix as i myself continuing to close the gap max was stopping two seconds behind ghastly had pitted he was 10.8 seconds behind but yeah it was now 2.7 behind logan Sargent. obviously the situation is, as you can now see Max Verstappen going for an overtake on myself here momentarily, the situation is we need a miracle to get ourselves back into this Grand Prix. We've got good pace in this car, but the fact that we don't have any DRS to assist us and, uh, you know, we're the worst car on the grid, it makes it a bit difficult here. So I was hoping... You know, for a miracle safety car, uh, which was looking pretty unlikely at this point. Now, as you can see, I mentioned to watch out for Lewis Hamilton, and here he is. He has run down the top two. Perez on the soft still, but they are a lot more worn than Hamilton Hards. Russell not far behind, but look at this battle. It continues right here. Hamilton making life miserable right there on the Red Bull driver. Now, Hamilton, can he complete the pass and move into second place? It looks like he might. Yes, he does. Hamilton to second. If I can get a perfectly timed safety car or a safety car at all, uh, it's going to really benefit us, but I think Lewis Hamilton could really benefit as well if we get a safety car, I would say, within the final 10 laps of the Grand Prix. We passed some drivers here, including our teammate of Yuki Tsunoda, who's now come into the pits here. Uh, so we're up to P16 briefly. It wasn't long till we would be coming into the pits as well. Pit window now opens here uh, on lap number 14. So we're going to be uh, coming in here in just a moment uh, to put on a set of hard tires. Lewis Hamilton, he now stays out as Leclerc has pitted, so it's him and Russell, one, two, Alonso in third as well, all those drivers on the hard, Sainz, Perez, and then Leclerc would be the net top three once this all cycles out. I'm myself now into the pits here for a fresh set of hard compound tires. It's that one and only stop of the day. We're also seeing uh, some two-stop strategies here. It's going to be interesting to see just which one benefits here. There was so much different strategy happening in this race that it was really difficult uh, to keep up with what everybody was doing and what exactly uh, was happening in this Grand Prix. But it was fun. I was really enjoying how this was kind of playing out. 
it's just a shame we're not in the mix right now because of that early spin. Hamilton going to go from hards to what appears to be a fresh set of medium tires. Alonso, he's going to come in and do the same thing, and I would expect George Russell to as well put on a fresh set of mediums uh, when he comes into the pit lane here. Momentarily, yellow flag. This was coming to lap 16 as we were now uh, cycled out, and it's... It's Esteban Ocon, who's just facing the pit wall, or not the pit wall, the wall, uh, as he has spun round. So, no safety car. We continue on, but he's lost a bunch of time, and Alpine has had a, a rough start to this season, especially with Pierre Gasly, but Ocon going for a spin puts him in dead last place. We're only in 19th, but we are still closing in on the back of Logan Sargent, but look at the gaps right now. Because of staying out a couple extra laps, we were quite a ways behind. Drivers like our teammate of Yuki Sonoda, a really close call right there with Magnussen, who was exiting the pits, but we get in front of him, but it wasn't long. He's on those mediums, which is a tire with a lot more grip, a lot more pace. He was able to pass me. I didn't make life too hard on uh, him because I was really struggling uh, to keep up with these guys at this point in the Grand Prix. Like I said, you know, to get us back kind of uh, almost in reset and, and get us back into this Grand Prix in general, we are going to need a miracle safety car. Lap 18 of 29. Not looking like it's going to happen for the second time. Now we're going to be out side by side with the Haas right there. Got very close again. Uh, and it was going to be a lot of deja vu because down the long straightaway here goes a Haas to overtake myself again. Alex Albon next in line in 19th place behind us in the Williams here. Now Lewis Hamilton. This is lap 18. Up the inside. Hamilton on the mediums now. He is going to pass Sainz. Sainz is on softs by the way. He's got to do another pit stop. So Carlos, he would come in uh, to the pits here and that is going to be a fresh set of mediums that will take him to the end. But he's going to lose quite a few positions now. Max Verstappen as well uh, is in for a fresh set set of medium. So second pit stop there for him. It's not been the greatest day uh, for Max Verstappen here now as we continue on. Lap 19 down into turn one. Albon all over the back of me. Pierre Gasly, another one that was on a two-stop strategy. But yeah, you can see right here, there goes Albon. He passes me and just showing how much I'm struggling at this point in the Grand Prix. If it stays green till the end, we're probably going to have a pace advantage. But the question is, will it be enough of an advantage uh, as we head down towards turn one? A lap later, yellow flags. And it looks like I saw, uh, I saw Haas offline and it's Nico Hulkenberg with a mechanical failure there. There goes his engine, but that wasn't it. We have Piastri as well off circuit there with a mechanical failure at the same time. And that's going to be the miracle safety car that we needed. Immediately, we were getting ready to come into the pits. It was going to be simple. We could only lose two positions. So I was going to come in for a fresh set of softs. We have two drivers have a mechanical failure at the same time. That always seems to bring out uh, at least a virtual safety car. Sometimes a full-blown safety car, at least in the last game. Looks like it's the same case in this game as well. So now up into P18 because we're beating the two drivers that are retired. Is we're going to go through the grid under safety car. So this safety car plays right into the hands of both Mercedes drivers. Lewis Hamilton has to be loving what he sees right now. Oh, he loves this Crofty. Sitting third Verstappen out of the question in 10th. He's got fresh mediums compared to everyone ahead on hards. Uh, this is a unique chance for them to win today. I hear Ted has some info on Verstappen. What you got for us, Ted? I was just talking to uh, some crew members with Red Bull. Uh, it sounds like Max has some kind of a leak in the car, which has caused this lack of pace all day long, guys. Not much they can do at that point, but survive. Safety car coming in this lap, let's prepare for some more racing. Real quick, Crofty, watch out for Owen on those soft tires here. He is going to be a rocket. Ready to go back racing, then safety car coming in here. It's going to be, what, a seven lap dash for cash here. Now, as we get ready to go back racing, it's Perez, Leclerc, Hamilton, your top three. Now, watch out for Carlos Sainz. He's got some work to do, but he might have some speed on those uh, fresh mediums that we see Lewis Hamilton on, at fresh mediums as well. Uh, but watch out for myself. We're on these fresh softs. I think we're going to be an absolute rocket, and we would prove that immediately here on the back of the Alpine of Esteban Ocon here. We go to the right side of the circuit there using my overtake button here draining the battery down to about 67 percent here as we head down into the corner albon a bit of a lock up there on the inside of his teammate of logan sergeant that allows me to close up right on the back of these guys alpine looking terrible right now with p ashry being the best one or sorry uh ghastly being the best one in p16 battle for the lead though it's perez leclerc hamilton loves what he sees because he can try and get in on this fight maybe get to the lead and take off now as they continue on it doesn't look like that's going to be the case so i don't know hold on here comes Ham 
Hamilton a big run down the straightaway into turn one. Hamilton's going to make a huge lunge on those mediums. Is it going to be enough to take the lead of the Grand Prix? That's the question. They're still side by side duking it out. This could be the fight for the victory right here on lap 24 of 29. Leclerc's not going to back out. Neither is Hamilton. It's two by two here in NASCAR style. What a fight. Hamilton goes through to the lead. Russell gets Perez in the third. He goes. Leclerc hangs on to second. Now as the battles continue all throughout the grid, but specifically myself now overtaking Gasly at the end of lap 23. Right into the back of Logan Sargent right there. His home Grand Prix hasn't gone tremendously. Uh, and now here we are attacking him myself as we head down towards turn one. Uh, as we have continued to have that rivalry of course in Formula 2. We haven't had many on track battles here this season. We've been kind of separated on pace. We've had a lot more pace than he has. Uh, it is certainly no secret there now as we continue on into 15th place. Now that rivalry, it might not reignite with Logan Sargent for another season or so. We really don't know. Here comes a big lunge up the inside of Alex Albon. Zhou Guan Yu trying to hold off Kevin Magnussen there, but we pass Albon who's also on softs, but we of course have way fresher softs uh, than he does now. So we continue on, but the, it's not over. Here we go. Up the inside of Magnussen who's making it a little bit difficult for myself. He's going to break a little bit later and actually comes across my nose right there into the final uh, mo couple of corners there. So we still fortunately take the position up at a P13 now on the back of my favorite driver here, Zhou Guan Yu. It always sucks to pass your favorite driver. It's like, I don't want to pass him. You know, I want him to go get a great finish. But here we go down into the breaking zone. I really went deep into the corner. So that gives Zhou uh, a second opportunity here to fight back around the outside. But it's going to be very short lived. Through we go and another position gain. We might even be able to not only get points here, but we might be able to beat our teammate of Yuki Sonoda, who's in the points right now, uh, as we close in on the final laps. Now, fellow Canadian of Lance Stroll there, P11. Lance Stroll is an interesting one, as I'm going to look to make a move on him, but he's been so terrible in qualifying, but his race pace has been pretty solid and competitive every single Grand Prix. Uh, so we see the same thing over and over again with Lance Stroll. Every race so far, really, this season, he qualifies terribly, and then he spends the whole Grand Prix making up for it and does a pretty well uh, job at it, but he just can't, of course, you know, capitalize on anything because he spends the first 90% of the Grand Prix rebounding from that poor qualifying effort. However, up at a P11, Mark tells me Bottas has an issue. So we're going to be able to get a free overtake on him here momentarily on the straightaway with the DRS open. And all of a sudden, what a terrible day it was to start out. We got the Miracle Safety Car. We got the soft tire opportunity because you we were at the back of the grid. And now for the third straight Grand Prix, we're into the points. Not only me, Yuki Sonoda as well looking at points, but we might beat Yuki here. We're coming to three laps to go. Lewis Hamilton still in command here now. Now, as you see Sonoda put in the attack on Lando Norris on the second DRS straight as we head down towards the corner here. Going to be a little bit nice to my teammate of Sonoda. Not going to dive bomb up the inside, but of course, we go for that overtake on Lando Norris. And uh, McLaren's been continuing to make some improvements here. Uh, Piastri was running pretty solid today before he had his mechanical failure, uh, going for some points as well now. Uh, but here we are, up in a P9. Yuki Sonoda, he's practically a sitting duck. There's not much he can do right here. We're already within a couple car lengths of him. We're not going to waste much time time. We're going for the overtake on my teammate of Yuki Sonoda here as it's going to be an easy pass coming to the final two laps as Lewis Hamilton continues to lead. Okay, please keep Yuki in the DRS to help him get points here. I repeat, keep Yuki in DRS. You hear that right there. Keep Yuki in the DRS. I was okay with that because I knew I couldn't run down Verstappen who was in seventh place. Just not a good day for, uh, for Verstappen. You heard Ted Kravitz report on why he wasn't quite having a, a great day. Magnuson, we get a, a message that Magnuson's also having an issue. Uh, he's behind us, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, I would keep Yuki in my DRS range right up till the final lap here. Uh, and now we're just bringing it home at this point. What a turnaround here. We've had a couple turnaround moments here over the last great which has allowed us to get these points finishes here uh, because we certainly haven't always had the pacer points in three straight Grand Prix. But keeping uh, Yuki in that DRS on this straightaway should be enough as we head down towards uh, the breaking zone here. Uh, and Lewis Hamilton is still out in front looking like it's actually going to happen. If Lewis Hamilton can hang on, it will be career win 104, his 193rd podium. What a career, of course, it has been for Lewis Hamilton. And he is in 
in command. Claire, close, but it's not going to be enough. He has a chance, but he doesn't take it down into the final turn. It's going to be Mercedes, both cars on the podium. Lewis Hamilton, career win, 104, and it's going to happen in Miami over a season without a win. It comes to an end here in the United States now as we're going to come through for an absolutely fantastic 8th place finish and a ninth place for our team at Yuki Sonoda. A great day for AlphaTauri as well. Great as well for the constructors, but Lewis Hamilton, the focus is on him. Back to the top step of the podium after over a season uh, in between his last win. We get driver of the day, the set of the podium for the celebrations. Yet another historic win under their belts. Well done to the whole team at Mercedes. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tires are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Lewis Hamilton picking up that victory here in Miami. What a race. Uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily crazy, but it only took, what, two mechanical failures there in that safety car to really change everything and, of course, uh, just create an absolutely uh, epic, epic ending here in Miami. Now, absolutely fantastic scenes there, and it's cool to see Lewis Hamilton, uh, you know, actually pick up a victory again here and get to celebrate on the top step of the podium uh, with his teammates of George Russell. You got Charles Leclerc up there as well and zero presence right there uh, from the Red Bull Racing Team Perez or Verstappen. Very unfortunate for them. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. There you see the podium. Carlos Sainz in fourth. Verstappen got up to P6 there in front of uh, Fernando Alonso who continues like seventh place finishes. I swear he's like finished seventh like every Grand Prix at this point, but uh, we'll take a look at the standings before we wrap things up there. Leclerc to the top step now. Five points ahead of Perez. Eight back is Verstappen. Russell, Hamilton 35 and 37 back. We are 88 back with 11 points on the board. Yuki Sonoda with his first two. And the Constructors, P7 for Alvatore right now at 13 points. Now Red Bull ahead by 27 over Ferrari. 59 over Mercedes. That's going to wrap it up for us. I think we go to Spain in the next one, if I'm not mistaken. I'll see you guys then for a new configuration. Have a great day, everybody.